Hello, welcome to Coast Currents. In the studio with me today is local musician, singer, and songwriter Stephen Bates. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you. So, Stephen, <laughs> start off with let me know how long have you been in Mendocino County? I've lived here my whole life. Um, I left for 12 years to go to college and to go to Los Angeles to play music. Okay. But, I, but the rest of the time I've been here. So, music always been a passion of yours? Absolutely. From the very beginning, um, rock and roll in particular. You know, uh, starts with the Beatles on, right. te on television. Okay. And um, we, that's what we all, even before we could play guitars, we would play Beatles. And how did you get involved in actually recording the music and producing your own CDs? Well, um, I started when I was 12 or 13, and we would play dances around here. We, you know, we'd play um, junior high school dances, things like that. Right, and have you always written? Was from an early age? Did you start experimenting with yeah, your I, songs? Yeah, I, I wrote a, I wrote some songs pretty early that were hilariously <laughs> simple, <laughs> you know. And I don't think I really, even when I was playing in college, um, I was in a, a three-piece band, and we ended up making a pretty good record. Uh, but at the beginning, you know, it was it was different because the bass player and the drummer they'd write lyrics and I'd write music and I was fine you know singing the lyrics that they wrote and then after I maybe I became 21 22 it started to dawn on me that I thought well I want to I want to sing you know lyrics that I wrote right and that's when I really started to do the thing where you say whoever wrote the song sings it you know in that way because it's hard to uh, you know find the 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 uh, realism of it. It was someone else, you know, for me it is. Right. I, it's easier for me to sing things that I, you know, that I wrote or, or believe in or that kind of thing. Right. Which brings us to hey. your new CD. Uh -oh. And I'd like to, to talk to us a little bit, uh, the audience, about this CD. It is Stephen Bates and the title is Play It Pretty for Atlantis. Yes. Would you like to share the title or the meaning behind the title? Well, it's very simple. Uh, I graduated in 1982, and so growing up here, Leonard Skinner was a band we listened to a lot. And there was a live record they did um, called Fr One More From The Road, and they're playing Freebird. And at one point, there's a slide guitar on there. It's the, the, the melody of the song. And, uh, and uh, Ronnie Van Zant says, play it pretty for Atlanta. So when we were in the studio recording this, uh -huh. Ro Roger Fritz is on this, and he's a fantastic slide player. So all the slide is, uh, is Roger Fritz on this record, and, um, and me, Calvin, and everyone who, were, who was in there recording really enjoyed listening to him do it. So I think it was on the song, um, the love song for those with ears to hear. He's okay. playing this beautiful slide, and I was listening, and I said, eh, play it pretty for Atlanta. And, and Calvin, in his very droll way, says, well, play it pretty for Atlantis. And I knew right then that I just thought that was what it had to be called, even though it took me a long time to sort of convince everyone else that I was really going to use it. You know, they were like, you're not going to really call it that, are you? And I said, of course. And, and it, made, it, it became that piece of art, because uh, Hugh Dignan, who did the artwork, right. wanted to you know, do sort of an Atlantis thing and uh, you know, semi-apocalyptic. Right, <laughs> OK. You know, so that's the story behind the title, and I was I really enjoy this. So you're joined by some close friends of yours on this yes, album. Yes. Who, who else is performing with you? Uh, James Preston on the drums, fantastic drummer. Uh, played with Sons of Champlin since 1972. Um, David Hayes, bass player, who played with everybody from uh, Van Morrison to Jesse Colin Young to Tom Waits. Um, Roger Fritz, of course, who's a fantastic luthier, makes great guitars, Fritz Brothers guitars. Mm -hmm. um, he And then... Um, uh, Bill Bottrell is on two songs, playing uh, acoustic 12 string and, on one and um, electric guitar on the other. Gene Parsons on the pedal steel, which is really beautiful, what he does. And Ralph Humphrey on drums uh, for one song in there, too. He's Great. a fabulous drummer. So how would you sum up this album in style? What would you say the influence would be? We wanted to make, or I wanted to make, a good rock and roll record. Um, and as we kept making it, uh, you know, every time there'd be a chance in the studio, you could say, oh, where's the Farfisa? Where's the, 
the bell or whatever it is, you know, put all those, you know, the glockenspiel or whatever on there. Right. We just didn't do it. And so to me, it's just a really good rock, rock and roll record where every other instrument besides the drums are, um, is a stringed instrument. What I noticed is it's, it's very much like a road trip kind yeah. of CD you put yeah. on and you take the trip because a lot of the tracks, you know, they do tell a complete story. They're not your usual like three minute cuts. Some right. of them go on for, you know, several minutes. Yes. And they take you on a journey. Yes. Can you illustrate a little bit? I see you brought your guitar with yes. you. Is there, is, there, is there a particular lyric or a particular riff or something that kind of illustrates those points? Or? Well, here's one. Uh, there's a song called um, Gone But Not For Long, mm -hmm. and we were doing it in the studio. Uh, it was uh, Ralph Humphrey came in for, on drums, David Hayes, um, Gene Parsons was doing the um, pedal steel, and Bill Bottrell was on the uh, 12 string, and I was, I was playing mandolin. Well, we recorded the song, uh, and of course, Ralph, being great as he is, he started, you know, playing some other things and put a, a, a certain break in there that I had to try to learn. And then we played it, and um, I repeated the verse as as the song was being recorded. I repeated the the one verse twi uh, two times, and they all said, "Oh yeah, well, you know, you gotta um, write another verse." And so here we we're in the studio, and I'm like, "Well, <laughs> it's what, you know?" <laughs> and it was Martin Luther uh, King Jr. Day. Okay. So. So I was there and I thought, well, okay. And I just wrote these things thinking about that, um, that day. And, I, and I, everyone was kind of sitting around and I walked outside and I had a, a uh, one line was missing. And I went up to Bill and I, I just showed him the page. I said, hey, Bill, I'm stuck, you know. And he kind of looked at it and he smoked his cigarette and watched the ocean and he kind of sat there. And then he came back and, and he gave me the line. So for me, I, I'm just going to sing that one verse if I can remember it correctly because that was the verse that was written on uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Okay. And so it has extra meaning. Right. So the good, let's see if I can remember. It's, um, it's uh, marching down the golden street. The milk may have turned, but it's just as sweet. Every single color walking hand in hand, facing down the dealers all across the land. Our lady sings a high and a lonesome tune. It's gonna be a reckoning some time around noon. Trouble gonna shine like an evening sun. They don't ever stop even when they won. Right? Now you're gonna be um, showcasing this new album at the Casper Inn, I believe. That's right. Ooh, tell our audience when you're going to be performing well, this. Well, it's gonna be um, September 29th. Okay. And what I wanna do is have a more, even more of a celebration to have musicians come, have extra amps set up, and have everyone plug in and rock it till they close. You it know? sounds like a really exciting yeah. and cool event. Yeah. I wonder if you would just give the audience this uh, song that you sing like an homage to San Francisco, which I know has mm -hmm. an important uh, re relevance to you as a, as a musician and to music in general. And so would you tell our audience a little bit about the track called Hey San Francisco? Hey San Francisco, um, my friend Hugh, who uh, did this artwork for right. the record, he took me uh, to see uh, Toots and the Maytals and another band, I forget their name, um, it was kind of a dead, uh, a Grateful Dead jam band, New Monsoon I think is what they were called, and it was at the Warfield. And so I'd never been there, and of course when he heard that from me he was shocked and he said, let's go to the Warfield. So I go in there and I couldn't believe what a beautiful place, like a Shakespearean theater that it was. And he was giving me the lowdown. He's like, oh yeah, you know, Jerry Garcia, they'd play here, acoustic. And, and I'm looking at this 2000 seat, beautiful place. And um, it just struck me sort of, you know, I, I, I call those places sort of like holy places, you know. And um, so I saw the show. I was just so impressed by the venue itself, and I went and wrote this song. I won't play the whole song. Right. I'll play a, um, is that what you wanted me to play, a little bit of it? Yeah, oh, okay. if you wouldn't mind. Okay, uh, let's see how, which verse is, I mean, I, it, the basic hook of it is just, it's a simple rock and roll, so it's like, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. And so, you know, like for San Francisco, it's saying, uh, Don't want no hate, we don't want no war. See, then my whole life 
kicking down my door. People trying to make you think like they believe. What we got right here, they could never receive. I said, hey, San Francisco, still got some flowers in your hair. Up there, playing electric guitar for all the hungry people out there. Right? Great. So that's what that song is you know, about. Well, and it's great. And audience, I highly recommend that if you're not familiar with Stephen's music, this is a wonderful way to discover him and his uh, extraordinary talent. And I hope that you will try to get to the Casper Inn on September the 29th and enjoy the show. And thank you for watching us. And we look forward to seeing you again on Coast Coast in the future.